Good Monday morning. I am MPJ and you are watching Fun Fun Function. A couple of weeks ago uh, I made an episode where we explored uh, dependency injection. Today's video is going to be a follow-up to that dealing with inversion of control. At the end of the video about uh, dependency injection, I talked about some of the caveats with dependency injection. One of the caveats that I talked about in that video was the trickiness in getting your uh, dependencies to the code that wants those dependencies injected in, in the context of a larger application. As it happens, a viewer has provided us with a fantastic example. Vasil Borowiak sent in this uh, piece of code asking how to deal with this problem. This code is just a fantastic example of, of the problem that I'm talking about. Alright, so Vasil has here the store document function that uh, we would like to add unit tests for. We want to make this thing testable. Before getting into inversion of control or anything like that, yet yeah, let's just get a feel for this code and what this does. So store document, it takes a user ID, it takes a uh, folder location, and it takes a file stream. We don't have more information than this piece of code, so I, I'm going to guess that file stream is uh, something that is from an upload form in, uh, in an interface. Uh, and folder location is uh, the location where we want to store the file. And the user ID is, well, the authenticated user. The user ID, it takes that and it passes it to this uh, method here on the user DB object uh, called find one. Uh, and it also does the uh, same thing with the folder location here. Well, it passes it to find one on the folder DB. So like here is it basically fetching the database equivalents of um, the user ID and the folder location. It uses promise.all to wait for both of those uh, to be resolved. Uh, these two return, uh, return promises. Uh, there, I have an episode on promises if you are uh, unfamiliar with how they work. Eventually promise.all will resolve into the actual user and the actual folder here. Then uh, it goes on and checks using the can write uh, method on the user access object if the uh, the user is allowed to write to this folder. This user can access can write it resolves into an allowed value here, and uh, if it is not allowed, it will uh, it will reject using a boom forbidden error. Um, I think I'm just going to remove this because it just confuses things. Boom is a HTTP library for uh, uh, for for doing like HTTP friendly errors that uh, can be passed up the chain, but it's not relevant for this example. So I'm just going to do like exception. Uh, it went wrong. <laughs> there we go. Mm, and oh, why not? some squiggly wings. If the user is allowed to write this directory, it goes on to call save here on file storage. It also passes a user and the folder to uh, as arguments to save. However, there is a mistake here because user and folder are, uh, are not in scope inside of this, this, this function here. So I'm going to fix that actually. <laughs> There, now it's correctly scoped and we have access to user and, and folder. That's not important to the example per se, I just wanted to fix the error. In the last episode, uh, we I demonstrated a very simple injection example. I'm going to show it to you now. Um, not going to go into this, we talked about this in detail on the last episode, but uh, we this code here, this get animals, it only has one dependency and we, we inject that single dependency. Uh, and this, this store document, this has quite a bit more dependencies. It relies on a lot of external code. So you have the user db, 
you have the folder DB, uh, you have the user access object, and you have the file storage. So if we use the same technique, uh, this uh, this thing, <laughs> the signature of, of store document, it would it would get pretty rough. It would uh, it would look some something like this. Uh, hang on, and it would get like user access and get like a file story. So you would have to inject all of these things. And when you called it like function like store a document. You'd have to pass all of these things in and then do like the user ID, the, uh, the, the folder, uh, the folder location, you know, and then, uh, then pass the actual file stream object, file stream. And let's imagine that this thing uh, is, uh, was, it's inside a, a view somehow. Uh, like it's, I, they could imagine this to be anything like a React view or or some Angular thing or whatever. Like something that renders stuff. Probably a thing that contains the form. Now suddenly this thing uh, would have to be responsible for injecting all of these things. And perhaps you, like how do you do that? Like either you you have to. Uh, instantiate them in this uh, in in this context here like new uh, user db or something uh, uh, like that perhaps and, and do the same thing with the other stuff like uh, but then you will get a testability problem with the view so perhaps you don't do that perhaps instead you you do like uh, you start doing this, like passing all of these things down. But this, this is like, this is completely unfeasible because like, it's cumbersome even now with just two lines of code and, and one dependency. Like just imagine like if you have 10 of these and you have to instantiate and like pass every single dependency that is used by anything down your tree. It's just, uh. And this is where inversion of control comes into the picture. So Vue, Vue doesn't really want to be concerned with, uh, with all of these things. It does need a way to store documents, but it, uh, it doesn't really want to, it, want to, it wants to have its, its document store to have batteries included, right? So the way we deal with this is to create this little guy, function store document factory and yeah there so this function is a factory of store document functions it produces store document functions and in order to do that it needs these it needs the dependencies that a store document uh, uh, function needs i'm gonna paste them in there and uh, what it does is that it just takes store document dot bind uh, and we don't care about this scope so we just pass null for the first argument and then we just pass these guys. If you happen to be unfamiliar with how bind works you can check out this video that I made on the topic. So what bind does here is that it's going to create a new function create and return a new function uh, that uh, has bound the first arguments here to whatever values we uh, we pass in here to the store document factory. Uh, I will get back to that, uh, but I'm gonna just show you how how it's how it's used uh, to give some context. So let's imagine that we have our main.js here, uh, the the thing that starts your entire application off, the one that creates the the, the view here. So it does like view and the view wants something. It wants, the view wants a store document. Just wants a store document. It doesn't want all of these things. It doesn't want to be concerned with that there. So you see here that it's view now expects to get a store document function, but it's, it's kind of like this batteries included store document function 
where you don't need to pass all of these dependencies in. That is what we use this, this bind uh, thing for. Let's do store document, uh, document factory. And let's say, yeah, let's say that we have imported these here, like whoops. And it requires all of these, hang out there, 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 and there. And this will now be a store document. And we pass that into the view. Just to give you an idea, let's imagine that uh, import uh, view from uh, view.js. We imagine that this here, this is the view.js. Uh, we just do export default function view. And you have to like imagine lots of view logic here. Let me clear out this white space here, there. And in the same way, let's imagine that this is another file. Um, not sure what we're gonna call it, like store document perhaps. Store document.js. And we import, uh, import store uh, document factory from store document and let's say that we export export this okay that's a lot of code uh, let me walk through really slowly with you what the hell happened here let's begin here in main.js so in an application that uses inversion of control, the root uh, level of your application is the part of your application that is uh, responsible for doing all of, all of the injecting happening in the app. So it uh, imports the uh, store document factory here, and it also imports uh, all of the dependencies that it knows that the store document factory needs. And then it uses the store document factory to create a store document function by passing all of the dependencies that uh, store document factory wants. And now we have this store document function that is ready to go. It has batteries included and we pass it down into the view which needs a store document function in order to save its stuff. So you see here that view, it gets a store document function, uh, but even though the store document function here actually has m way more arguments, it has uh, these seven arguments, uh, and still we're able to call it here with just, uh, with just three, uh, and that is because the store document factory uh, has already welded that on by using bind here. So it welds these uh, these functions onto a new function, new variant of store document that has these first four arguments always appended. Kind of like a batteries included kind of thing. There's a new feature in uh, JavaScript called destructuring. I have an episode on that there uh, that you can use to make this thing a little bit less verbose. If I add curly bracket here and curly bracket here, now that means that the first argument to the store document function is a dependencies object. Like it's an object where that you expect to have these, these properties. Uh, and that means that I can just do like this depth. Bonk, 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 bonk. And just do this here. That there, that there, ha! Huh. That's a lot cleaner. If you don't like the uh, store document factory naming, you can perhaps call it create store document instead. The exact wording and, and syntax of these things, that is not what is important. I'm just showing it to you here in order for you to get some idea 
of, of how, how, it, how it kind of works in real life. But what is important is the principle. So we have main.js here. Uh, I've drawn main.js as a person for some reason, like perhaps because it is the controller, the boss of the application that just coordinates and puts everything together. So when main.js starts setting up the application, it, it starts by creating this store document, uh, store document function. And the reason it does that is because main.js knows that the view will need a store document. Otherwise, the view, you can't handle file uploads in the view if you don't. Main.js is also aware that store document needs a couple of things in turn. To, to work. So in the example that we saw before, these, this is the uh, user DB and the folder DB and the, uh, the user access thing. And these are injected into the, uh, the, the store, store document. In the code before, we had this factory function that uh, made this a little bit easier for main.js. But from a conceptual standpoint, uh, it, the responsibility might as well have been in main.js. It doesn't matter too much. And once main.js has created uh, the store document function, it is injected into the view. So now it's there inside the view all mm, cozy. So the view now has access to this batteries included uh, store document. The view does not really care at all about these three, uh, these dependencies here. Like from the view's standpoint, from the view's point of view, this might as well have been, a it's just a black box that it can call to store documents. And this is what is referred to when you say inversion of control. Like now the view is no, no longer concerned with the details of the implementation that has been abstracted away up here into main.js, so it has been, control has been inverted, sort of. I hope this made sense to you. If it didn't, that's perfectly okay. This is a bit mind-boggling sometimes. Just post a question down below and uh, I or a fellow viewer shall answer your question. And that's it! You have watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release these every Monday morning, 0800 GMT time, but you will forget that! In order to not miss the next episode, you can click the little bell next to the subscribe button in the YouTube app to enable notifications. This episode was pretty technical. I also have this softer musings episode that you might want to check out. Or this episode which YouTube says is machine learning but really is just arbitrary. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning. <laughs>